How old was I when I first got introduced to golf? I was probably about 27, 28 years old. It was right after the military, about a year, about a year after the military. I chose golf mainly because it was a sport that uh, allowed more independence. Um, I liked the competitiveness to it. Uh, and I am sort of a competitive person. Um, and it's just something that just gravitated, not, not only because of mental, but also physically, because I just wasn't able to play some of the other sports I liked as much as I could. My body just couldn't handle it after the military. It was interesting. I try to reflect back on the, as the love of golf progressed, and I was trying to understand why. I thought it was because I was competitive, because golf can be that, but it actually was the serenity behind golf. It was being able to be out on the course, uh, sometimes, most of the time, playing by myself, um, just being separated from everything, and it, any golfer would know you need to focus on golf. You need to block other things out, zone in, and pay attention. And that actually played a major part in my evolution and love for golf because I found myself where I had that peace and that calmness. Even though you could be frustrated by what you do, it still didn't take away for that four to four and a half to five hours of just myself in this course. And that actually played a major, it, it provided a lot of support for myself internally. Golf helped me, uh, over, I wouldn't say, I can't say overcome, but it helped me deal with a lot of my challenges for PTSD, anxiety, and other things that I, at the time, did not know I had. Um, you clearly, when I came out of the military, I already had this, but it was unbeknownst to me that this existed. So as the evolution of my golf playing progressed, and I, again, not knowing, but I started to fall in love with golf. And then as I, this, like I said, the serenity, being able to play by myself, that in itself was why it just started giving me some level of calmness. And again, I did not know why. Again, I, for the years, I thought it was the competitiveness. But looking back now, as I've been able to get therapy, been able to uh, be on all these support groups, I look back and I see that is why this was happening to me, and this is why I love to get out there. There was a time I was playing golf three times a, a week. I was searching and thriving to play, and it was because that I needed that. So. For me, golf, I would say, would say it saved my life, but I would say it had a major impact on me being able to find balance, and that's why I kept playing. And yes, I did enjoy the competitiveness. I did want to get better, and I did get better, but there was more to it. You know, some, for somebody else who is went through or is going to go through what I went through, and pretty much that's most military soldiers who seize combat, or been a part of combat zones and they come out and they transition into the civilian world. Um, and if they are able to find golf, I definitely would like for them to understand that, you know, first, you know, you find the level of patience. You, I mean, because golf can be very frustrating. Everybody who plays golf knows that. But I think my advice to them is to truly um, take a hold of it and try to find what they can get out of it. Um, I didn't, I was probably lucky enough to just fall into different programs and organizations in golf. You know, I was able to be a part of a lot of things and also got to meet people and those things kind of helped. And then you find yourself in associations with other stuff because a lot of times as vets have to deal with the things they deal with, usually it relates to loneliness. Um, you don't have some of the support that you have when you're in the military. Yes, you may have family. Yes, you may have other vets. But what happens when you're either by yourself or what happens if you're not married? And then, or maybe divorced because of whatever took place in your life. Uh, golf can open up some of those doors, I think, that would allow you to find a commonality. You know, they're not, it may or may not be vets, but if you actually enjoy the sport, and again, you find that serenity out there in a the golf course, being able to share beers and look at the golf cart girls and all that gives you that some level of entertainment for at least about, again, four to six, four to five hours or six hours or not, you know, depending if you're going to the 19th hole.
the things that I've been able to give back in golf or the things I've been able to do and be a part of while during my journey of golf, it happened by accident. It wasn't I was seeking to do it. It's just, again, I wanted to surround myself around golf because I felt something. I felt that connection. Uh, one of the earliest things was I was part of the, uh, the Sacramento Black Golf Club. Um, I know Rick Jennings, who's now city council member, was, you know, he was the president of that during that time. And I was the junior golf chairman, whatever title I had. Um, I was also part of the Capital City Golf Council where Mike Woods was there. He's the only name I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, he was a part of that and we got to host all these tournaments. And it was just something, again, surrounding myself around people of like mind and that was so much fun. And then I ended up uh, joining uh, at the time with St. Hope with this, that transition into South High with Kevin Johnson. And I was actually the first, well, not the first, but I was the female or the girls golf coach at Sac High. And that was that was a blast. Uh, we're still in early stages of the, uh, I was the second coach to take over and to take those young girls and to expose them to golf, it was huge because they didn't have necessarily have access to golf clubs. They didn't have access to courses and our relationship with Morton Golf and others, we were able to give them a chance. Um, I can't tell you how many times we were at the nine hole and just, you know, over down by Bing Maloney and just playing out there trying to work on our game. And that was probably the most rewarding. And it's unfortunate I had to eventually move, but during that time, watching those girls play against the other high schools and you could see them evolving. And even some of them I stay in touch with now. I know I watch them on Facebook and they have since graduated. I know one young lady who's you know, got her master's or at St. Mary's and just doing well. And I like to think that golf had something to do with that. They gave them an activity to keep them focused and kept them from being distracted during their time at uh, Sac I. So the advice I would give people who are probably struggling with a lot of the stereotypes, like there's a racial divide, um, there's some of the concepts of, you know, it's very costly. Um, you know, I mean, some of those things are absolutely true. It is very hard. It is cost, can be costly, but, and, and then is there a racial divide? I don't think you see the racial divide as much anymore. Um, you know, I think most of the world gives credit to Tiger Woods for introducing it to another culture. And then those cultural people are breaking it down to get opportunities. And I think that's not an issue anymore, but I will say it, Price hasn't changed. If anything, it's probably gotten a little worse. You buy a driver, he's now getting you up to about $900, where I remember I could get one for $250 um, because of technology, of course. But, you know, there's ways around all of those things. I mean, you can get used clubs. Uh, there's a lot of programs that allows you to play for free. There's discount rates. As a veteran specifically, I know that uh, there's a lot of opportunity for discounted rates there, depending on the course. I know on Veterans Day, we play for free in many of the courses. I always enjoyed that. I think I played twice, every, you know, a different course. Um, so there's always, if there's a interest, there's always a way. And then there's always just, you know, being a part of committees and organizations that involve in golf and finding your way through them to be to be able to play. Again, when I was with the SAC, with the uh, Capital City Golf, uh, I know I got a discount for being a part of that. So on all the courses in the Sacramento County, so that actually helped my pocketbook because I wasn't the most wealthiest person, but I played about three times a week. So I must have found some way to do that, as a, you know. So. I think anybody who has an interest, you can find a way. And it, plus, I think there's a community of golf that exists where if people see that you actually love playing it, you, they'll, you know, hey, I got you covered. Because it's kind of tough to find a foursome all the time. So if you're somebody who loves and they know you're sitting over there at the sideline, they'll, hey, you know what, we'll split your fourth fee. So there's always a way. And then again, you also have like twilights and all that, especially when the time zone changes.